What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you a brand new video. And I got a special one for you guys today. I have some incredible attacks to show you guys from this war. For those of you wondering what this is, this, was, this is the Forge by the Bay family. Forge from Steel in Clintonmo Bay did an arranged war uh, for the holiday weekend. Uh, right before Christmas, and what was what made it even more special is the fact that this was not a friendly war. We spun this shit old school style, uh, where we matched weights, we matched breakdown, said, okay, you spin, we'll spin, and we ended up matching, and it was a lot of fun. It's always fun to do these uh, family scrim uh, type wars, but both sides were definitely playing to win. That's what Fortune Steel did, getting a one-star victory, the final. 111 to 110. I got all kinds of uh, attacks to show you guys. Uh, you know, we'll start off with some of the Town Hall 9s and we'll show you uh, a few of our 10v10 3 stars. We had seven of them uh, from this war and we also had an 11v11 triple. We'll go ahead and look at the maps. Speaking of the 11v11 triples, look at what CP did to our side, guys. Granted, we still got the victory by a star, but look what they did. Three 11v11 triples. Uh, we have Top Ramen taking out our number one, and we got Titan, my man Titan, getting an 11v11 six-pack. Huge shout out to him, putting up amazing, amazing numbers uh, for the CB side. And this was, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, this was a half dip war. Uh, so half the Town Hall 11 attacks went to dips, or, or the most they could use. This was a 6, I believe this was a 6-17 breakdown. So six of their attacks at the most could be used for dips. The other attacks had to be for 11 11 attempts. And I'm kind of enjoying uh, the half dip wars. We have done a few of them. We did one uh, half dip war with 1001 Templars, and it is, it is a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, so CB had seven 10v10s as well. Uh, huge shout out to CB's Town Hall 9s. Did absolute work, provided uh, all kinds of scouts. That's one thing that we kind of uh, struggled with this war. We still got done, had to dip a couple, uh, but that's one area that we have usually, we're usually pretty strong in, but our nines definitely struggled this war, but still got it done. Uh, so this was the 11 11 triple. Uh, stay tuned, I will show you guys that attack uh, more towards the end of the video. And there wasn't a lot of 10v11 attacks, uh, again, being a half dip war. We did do a few of them. So we did have some 10v11 guys who were actually uh, going for 10v10 three stars. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll show you which guy that was. We got Jacob, my man Jacob, getting a 10v10 six pack, taking out CB's fearless leader, Rob. Uh, damn near this talent 10 at the top of the map, Jacob. Uh, doing work right there, getting that 10v10. Uh, we had Fuzz taking out uh, Lighting Jack. Uh, Jacob, there was his other 10v10. Uh, this was my 10v10 on Boog. Uh, we had Kala Drilling. He was our 10v11 guy who got uh, a 10v10 triple this war. Shout out to him. Uh, we had Maza picking up his first 10v10 triple. And another 10v11 guy, NECA, taking out number 23, Rahat. So I will be showing you guys those attacks, but... Like you always say, it's clockwork, guys. We got to give some love to the Town Hall 9s. Like I said, a lot of them struggled this war, but a few of them did very, very well. Uh, so we'll start off with the Legend coming in with this legendary attack, bringing four golems. I think he had like 15 wizards on this attack, but check it out. He's got three jump, one rage, nothing for the back end. He's got two hogs uh, to help out with the back end. Uh, but just starting off very, very heavy, and it's all kill squad. This attack, guys, is all kill squad, setting up a beautiful funnel, jump leading right into that island expo compartment, and this was a fresh hit. Like I said, at least for the recaps, I like sh uh, showing attacks uh, that are fresh hits, uh, the element of surprise, and the fact that it's kind of a unique attack. Definitely want to get this one out to you guys. Uh, so right here, he drops down those two hogs, uh, but the bowler skips ended up taking out that archer tower, uh, but just brought down some hogs for good measure and even took out this archer tower as well. One more jump leading to the back end of this base uh, where the rest of the threats are. You'll see there are a couple Teslas over here by the town hall in the BK platform. Uh, one thing, uh, in case you missed it, even though things kind of look like they're petering out, still has heroes up, still has a few bowlers up. 
but he has both abilities. That's how you know that this base is going to be completely wrecked. Just a pair of Teslas and a few cannons left on this base, but and even has, I completely missed that, even has a couple golems up. Uh, so very, very nice work to the legend and also bringing a kind of a unique attack um, to the battlefield. So I really, really enjoyed this one. Want to get this attack out to you guys. And he's going to be ending up here on, on uh, the Dark Barracks. Very, very nicely done to the legend uh, taking down that base fresh. Okay, so that was the, the Town Hall 9 attack that we're featuring this war. Now we'll go ahead and get into the heavy hitter action. I got to burn Rahat's base former FFS member uh, so we're gonna have NECA um, on his Town Hall 10 account gonna be bringing in a shattered uh, hobo uh, he does have bowlers gonna be coming out of the CC and look at these ice wizards let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about the ice wizards back by popular demand the ice wizards are here uh for what like maybe five or six more days something like that uh but back by popular demand doing work trimming those defenses getting those funnels set uh, an awesome counterpart uh to the regular wizard uh so i like i did like how he brought those to this attack jump leading everything into the core uh where he's going to be able to get both bomb towers he already took out the enemy clan castle and uh, he's going to be obviously taking out the enemy queen as he pops uh, king ability. So queen is down. Both bomb towers are down. And you can clearly see the perfect defense path set for the hogs once he broke the defense ring with that shower kill squad. And this attack right here, guys, with the jump and a rage for the kill squad uh, with CC bowlers and bringing three heals for the hog portion. Absolutely doing work. And based on how this, uh, well, how this base is set up, uh, really taking advantage on this layout with the single shot Inferno ITs. He's going to have way too many hogs to just overpower this base. And he's going to have a heal spell for pretty much, watch the heal placement on these hogs right as the bomb goes off look at how it covers the entire inferno tower uh, the entire inferno tower as well as that second bomb on the back end uh, so even though his hogs ate one more giant bomb and are taking a few point defense on the back end bringing that heal and the placement that he had it in bringing those hogs up to full health beautiful execution on that on that heal placement had to have that perfect or that probably more than likely would have been a defense uh but NECA with a beautiful heal placement getting that 10v10 uh saving the best for last that town hall is going to be the last building to go down very very nice hit rip or a hat uh on that base do not run that base anymore okay next up we have oh i did want to give a shout out to taz too like i said this is all family right here huge shout out to taz his base guys taking something like 399% uh, defenses were unable to clear him. Jacob getting a 99% uh, hitting him with CG. So, so close. But we'll go ahead and check out Maza's hit. Uh, also bringing uh, a CB Hobo. Not bringing Hogs in the Clan Castle. Going with the Bowlers. And check out the Ice Wizards in action. Taking out that Tesla. Ice Wizards on the right. Taking out that Mortar. Uh, they did say hello that giant bomb took out two of them but look at this ice wizard and in case you guys miss it not only do they do a crap ton of damage but they also slow the defenses down kind of like a mini like a mini free spell um, especially since the free spell doesn't really do anything anymore uh, I do like how the ice wizards uh, do do a good job slowing those defenses down beautiful wall break jump right into the core where he gets a bomb tower gets an expo breaks the defensive ring takes out the enemy queen before he goes ahead and drops down these hogs look at this kill squad just doing absolute work hogs coming in here at three o'clock as he has two thick groups swarming these defenses. Uh, so right here, uh, drops the first heal spell uh, right as that Inferno Tower goes down. Very, very nice placement on that one. Uh, but right here, kind of dropped kind of like a, seemed like a panic heal uh, where there was a bomb between the Wizard Tower and that Tesla that snuck up on him, went ahead and dropped down that heal spell. Uh, but he still does have a big group of hogs, even has that giant uh, still tanking that Inferno Tower. And right here, could have shifted that one, I don't know, maybe a few tiles. 
um, but didn't know if there was going to be a giant bomb between the Tesla and the Cannon, but he still has way too many hogs left up. Last uh, splash defense to go down was that Wizard Tower. Again, way too many hogs uh, for these last two remaining point defenses, and also notice how he dropped the Wizards uh, behind the hogs where they first started. Uh, very, very nicely done. I'm not sure. I believe this was a fresh hit, too. So he didn't know exactly where the giant bombs were. Still has a huge wad of hogs with maybe five or six left over. Also, ending on the town hall being the last building to go down. Wrap it up with that three star. And I believe he said uh, in game or on voice, I can't remember, but I believe he said this was his first legit 10v10 three star uh, in an actual arranged war, not like a farm war or anything like that. So much love, much respect. Uh, huge shout out to Maza. Okay, so people have been trying to figure out ways, finding ways around the single shot or the single target Inferno Towers, trying to find their weakness. Kala drilling, uh, finding it, uh, drilling his way into the core of this base. Masaki, no less, another uh, former FFS member. Shout out to him. But if you guys look down at the troop bar, He's bringing, Kala is bringing nine giants to this attack. Remember, a golem, whether it's a level five golem or a level seven golem, does not matter. That single target Inferno Tower will roast it in just a few seconds. But bringing nine giants instead of golems, not sure if he's onto something, but uh, definitely a unique attack that we don't see at Town Hall 10 every day. But as you guys may well know, Bitch is wrecking at the Town Hall 10 level right now. <clears throat> nice jump spell and rage, nice leading rage to get all those troops pushed into the core where he's going to take out that Inferno Tower. Notice he also has nine giants under rage uh, to help. Remember, golems don't do a whole lot of damage, but when you have nine giants all clumped up swinging, they're going to be able to take out uh, some defenses. So here we go. King making his way to the back end of the base. He still has both hero abilities uh, left to use. And you'll see his queen, he does have, and look at the flank over here on the right, uh, nice and healthy. And we do have the queen walking, or she started her walk at six o'clock going up to nine. Uh, and he still has her, her ability and two hogs. Look at, look at the wreckage on this base. Pretty much ended up swagging these hogs. Huge shout out uh, to Kala. And again, a very unique attack. They're gonna end at the Builder Hut up at 12 o'clock. Uh, but a very, very unique attack, bringing nine giants as opposed to a golem. Uh, very, very interesting. Let me know what you guys think of that attack down below. Huge shout out to him. I'm going to give myself some love. I have passed up a couple of my 10v10s uh, in, the, in the past couple videos. So I want to give myself a shout out and show myself some love. And also doing, I didn't do a call, I did notice these Infernal Towers are on multi-target. Um... So I'm bringing golems, just an old-fashioned, classic queen watch, uh, queen walk, uh, bitch attack. We're gonna have the flank over here at three o'clock, where they're gonna be walking up. Queen down at six. She's gonna be walking up towards nine. Similar, I mean, almost same entry uh, as Kala's. Again, I'm bringing golems, dropping down the bowlers. I'm going to have a nice jump to lead everything in. Uh, one thing about this base, and this was also a fresh uh, fresh hit. Like I said, nines kind of struggled this war. We didn't have a lot of uh, scouts in this base. But look at all the wizard towers clumped up. Saving queen ability. I almost popped it, but I want to save the queen ability as long as I could. I knew uh, the main push was coming in that was going to help her um, on her walk to take out some of these high DPS uh, defenses. But look at the value in the core, everything under heal. And like I said, bitch, on certain base layouts uh, were strong, was strong before, but knowing that you can heal through those Inferno Towers again, making it that much stronger. All bomb towers are down, all splash down at this point. Both ITs, we got all the wizard towers down, both bomb towers down. And right here, the queen wasn't taking any damage. So the moment she went to full health, uh, got kind of lucky here. The healers ended up peeling off of her and healing all the bowlers right there in the core and even healing the golem as healers do like a, well, not splash damage, but they splash heal. They're all clumped up, uh, getting good value from these rock skips, and I do still have queen ability. Right here, it's kind of weird. She's beating on the wall. It's like she wants to get to the hound, then she's like, okay, I'm not going to get to the hound. I'm going to go and shoot the air defense instead, uh, like so, uh, but way too much for this base to handle. We got a mortar. 
and just a cannon and an archer tower left up. We'll go ahead and times this as this ba it was just going to be, if anything, if this was going to be a fail, it was going to be a time fail. Still had a few seconds left or quite a few seconds left. Um, and yeah, I ended up getting it done. Hound popping at the last second. So shout out to me on that 10v10 against Clantanamo Bay. Uh, this was Jacob's uh, 10v10-3, so I'm going to show his other attack, which was on a much heavier base. And we did have Fuzz doing it with Miners, taking out this one. Also came down, it was like a nanosecond uh, before he got it. But huge, huge shout to Fuzz, doing nothing but good things since the merger. Here's the attack from Jacob, taking out... Um, Rob, the fearless leader from Quentamo Bay, Jacob will be doing work. He said, I'm not doing, I'm not doing the eight peck attack. I'm not doing HGHB. I'm not doing bitch. Jacob said, you know what? I'm sticking to the classics. I'm going to be doing a Sui Hero Lalo. And when you think about it, I'll show you what happens over at this side of the base once we get there. But I mean, almost any attack at this point, because of the Inferno Tower, nerf and the expo nerf is going to be stronger than what it was before and if you think about it sui hero lalo was pretty much the go-to 10v10 attack so at the end of the day sui hero lalo is even stronger than what it was before just depending what's going to be coming out of the clan castle we knew what was in this one uh saving his ability for the last second to get the inferno tower and he ended up getting uh, both Teslas uh, in that island infernal tower compartment as well. Hound coming in at 12, coming in at 230, dropping about four loons per defense with two haste. CC Hound to land on the air defense up here at 1030. Uh, so here we have another huge wad of loons followed by another haste. Beautiful rage right there in the core. Notice he started very, very heavy on the loon deployment because he knew that that group of loons was going to be the loons that were going to be taking out those three expos in the core surrounding that clan castle and right here where a lot of these loons would have died off uh this base was wrecked pre-meta post or pre-update post update wouldn't have mattered this base is going to be smashed but that heal spell bringing those loons up to full health saving that rage for the last few defenses and one of the last defenses to go down was actually an air defense but look at how many loons he has up but like i said uh that heal spell uh, healing up all those loons where they wouldn't have before made this base get wrecked even harder. Huge shout to Rob uh, from CB. Even bigger shout out to Jacob tripling him. So big shout out. And he had three 10v10s this war and he did 10v10 six pack uh, with his main uh, being the one that you guys just saw. Okay. Now we're going to check out PSC uh, hitting on his Town Hall 11. Going to be taking out Rio. Three versus three right here. Doing it with bitch. Um, so he's going to be starting very, very heavy uh, with this deployment. Um, as he's bringing in all the bowlers. Already has all the bowlers dropped. Wants to make sure he gets a very nice flank going down each side of this base. To make sure the bulk of... Well, not only his heroes, but the bulk of the bowlers are going to be in the core, getting rid of all three of these wizard towers on the initial entry and the eagle artillery. Notice that jump leading everything in uh, to the core. And as you see, like we said, a single single shot infernal towers kind of being the new meta from what we're seeing. Even Town Hall Levens giving it a go, uh, but something like a bitch attack going to overpower just completely swarm uh these uh inferno towers completely negating them very very nicely done flank kind of peters out over here on the upper right hand side but check out down here king doing an amazing job tanking and notice he also has the skellies working on the town hall and the skeletons doing a fair bit of tanking for that group of bowlers this, this attack only lasted what a minute and 30 seconds something like that queen going down at the very very end but way too much for that archer tower to handle uh which was the last building to go down beautiful attack an 11v11 on the ffs side uh, big shout to him but that's pretty much gonna do it guys that's gonna wrap it up for uh the forge by the bay uh war christmas arranged war weekend uh for this holiday uh matchup holiday scrim uh fortune steel getting the one star victory very very close war came down to the last few attacks um a dip fail is pr what pretty much uh was the nail in the coffin for the cb side uh both sides getting seven 10 v 10 three stars was a lot of fun hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did um if you get if you did like the video uh make sure you like it 
Um, and of course, comments, questions, or concerns down in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And a huge shout out from everybody from Fortrum Steel and Clentonmo Bay. Huge shout out to the Fortrum, or huge shout out to the Forge by the Bay family. Awesome, awesome war. This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.